AMC Entertainment is getting hit with another lawsuit. This time from Ape Holders. Yeah, you really can't make this stuff up. Let's go ahead and get into what's happening today with AMC Stock. AMC Stock is down about 4.28%. Overall, still making that move from the lows of $3.18. The trajectory has been up ever since the initial 35% drop that we've seen back here on August 14th. Cost of borrow fees, short interest, failure to delivers, all of them skyrocketing today or remaining very, very elevated. Let's get into everything that's happening today, everything that you need to know. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. So let's get into this lawsuit situation first things first. Reuters is reporting this to us. It says AMC hit with fresh class action lawsuit over stock conversion. Seems like everyone is displeased. AMC Entertainment Inc. was hit with a class action lawsuit on behalf of preferred shareholders that are challenging its stock conversion plan. Just days after the cinema operator ended a bruising legal fight with a different group of investors, AMC got court approval on Friday for a settlement of a class action lawsuit by holders of the company's common stock, clearing the way for the company to convert its preferred stock known as Apes to common shares. AMC a meme stock that was a part of the social media-fueled trading frenzy in 2021, along with other companies such as GameStop, had said that the conversion plan is key to strengthening its finances. A holder of Apes said in the lawsuit, which was filed late on Monday but hit with the public docket on Tuesday, that Ape investors are being shortchanged in the settlement that was approved on Friday. AMC did not request to a respond to a request for comment. AMC agreed to settle the class action by holders of common stock by providing them with, with additional shares worth an estimated $129 million. The holders of common stock had claimed that the company rigged a shareholder vote against them. In the new lawsuit in the Delaware Chance Court of Chancery, Ape investor Michael Simmons claims AMC is obligated to provide the same amount of new stock to Ape holders as the company is giving to common shareholders in the settlement. Simmons complaint, Simon's complaint said the settlement quote has the effect of diluting the preferred shareholders ownership interest in AMC. He also said it violates the certificate of designation that governs AMC preferred stock. The lawsuit adds to months of legal turmoil for the company. Objections to shareholder class action settlements are rare, but AMC received thousands of investors uh, who questioned claims about the company's dire finances. The settlement was initially rejected by the Court of Chancery judge in July before the judge signed off on a revised deal on Friday. So this is a weird situation and actually sounds legally correct. Like you probably need to give the same settlement to preferred shareholders as well. So the judge did approve this and AMC set the date of conversion for August 24th. This could delay it a little bit. I think this 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 obviously is not going to be as long as the other one, where it's been months since this was voted as a yes, and it it it, it finally just got approved. I don't necessarily think it's going to be that long or take that long. But it's a possibility this does get delayed for a little while. Although it seems like one of those things where it's legally binding, so you kind of have to do it nonetheless. So uh, that is something that is affecting AMC stock today. Now, bond yields pretty flat on the day for the two-year. Ten-year is up slightly. You're breaking out to new highs. So it looks like this is actually having a, a decent effect on the market's and some of your small and mid cap stocks. This is kind of um, an overhanging negative kind of catalyst, I want to say, but it's it's they've been rising for a while. Um, so it's really putting pressure on a lot of your small and mid cap stocks. That's why they've kind of been dying. Now, Target's earnings came out really bad, but the stock actually went higher, which is kind of what we've seen in uh, 2023 so far in this earning season, bad earnings, stock rallies, good earnings, stock falls. So Target didn't really show us good things about the consumer. Uh, so that's also something that is kind of 
negatively uh, weighing on the markets today. If we take a look at the S&P, S&P is going negative down 0.02%. The NASDAQ is down about a third of 1%. So a little bit worse for uh, technology out there. But nonetheless, Barbie beats Batman becomes Warner Bros highest grossing domestic release. Barbie is top 537 million, making it the highest grossing domestic movie in Warner Brothers Discovery's 100 year history. The previous record holder was Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, which generated 536 million in 2008. The bubblegum pink collaboration between Greta Gerwig, Mattel, and Warner Bros. Discovery had collected more than $1.2 billion at the global box office since its July 21st release. Markets don't seem to care much about fundamentals, at least when it comes down to AMC stock recently, because AMC just turned profitable, and it looks like next quarter is going to be even better. So this is more good news and more reassurance that next quarter, or this quarter, current quarter, I should say, is going to be a good one. Now, let's take a look at the Ortex data. Now, AMC stock is seeing a little bit of a bounce, only down 3.8% now. But you have your cost to borrow fees that are absolutely insane. Typically, you would have expected these fees to actually fall after the conversion or after the settlement from the courts was approved. Because in, in, in theory, right, you wouldn't want to be short on AMC as much anymore. There shouldn't be as much demand anymore to short AMC, but there is. Cost of borrow fees as of August 9th were around 243%, and today on Interactive Brokers, they're about 900%. A huge jump recently, which kind of defies a logic. Now, if we take a look at Ortex's numbers, cost of borrow average, 907, 977%. Cost of borrow max, 1,040%. Cost of borrow minimum, 808.5%. Uh, Some very abnormally high numbers, especially given what just happened with the courts. AMC stock is still on the threshold securities list, and we'll take a look at the FTDs here in just a moment. You have 28.36% short interest of free float. That is up half of 1% today, and 146 0.42 million shares that are currently sold short. That is up 836, almost 837,000 shares on the day today. So uh, yeah, more of that shorting activity, which again, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. After a 35% drop, it seems like everyone just wanted to short AMC after the fact. They didn't want to be as short before the ruling, which is uh, pretty interesting. Now, short score sitting at 93 uh, 536 million worth of short positions currently in AMC. 28.2% short interest of free float. This is what I find very weird. Free flow out on loan is 40.46%. Your estimated short interest of free flow is 28%. There's a big difference here, like 12% of a gap, almost 13% of a gap between the short interest of free float and the free flow out on loan. Shares out on loan is 209 million. Days to cover sitting at 7.71. Cost to borrow 286.71%. And utilization at 83.5%. So some very abnormal numbers over here. Very, very large. If we take a look at the option activity, same story over here. A lot of shorts. Um, Want to use the options to create a lot of those synthetic shorts. Another reason why potentially we're seeing a lot of these FTDs. It's either that. FTD is being created in the options world or a lot of naked shorting or maybe even both. You're seeing 96 orders totaling $16.04 million with a positive order value of 2%. So uh, very negative. Very, very negative. And uh, that's that's kind of a factor that is helping to push AMC stock down as of right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at AMC's FTDs. Um, and then we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about AMC and look at the charts and uh, all of that. So the FTDs are actually starting to um, rise a little bit, it looks like. Um, if you look at this chart up here, you've kind of been falling a little bit. And now they're actually starting to rise again ever since the conversion. For today, you are currently seeing about 13 million FTDs that do need to be closed out of. And then you kind of fall but they remain very elevated for multiple weeks from now. So this can be a factor to help cause the stock to go higher. Um, 
gradually, right? Because these are FTDs. These are shares that need to be closed out of. On the other hand, these are shares that shouldn't exist out in the market. So it's kind of like a buyback from a company. Uh, just with hedge funds and institutions and market makers that have to buy back stock and uh, take down the amount of shares that are outstanding. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. And that's kind of why um, you could expect to see some form of some upside. And that's kind of what we have seen recently, right? After that 35% drop, you did see some upside for AMC. In the last you know couple of days, you have rallied, right? And if we take a look at the lows from $3.18 per share to where we're currently at now, you have made a move of almost 11% from the lows. And I do think at this point, uh, just speaking with a little bit of, co of common sense, it makes sense to close out some of your short positions, right? To reduce some of that illegal option activity or some of that illegal shorting activity. And that could be positive factors to send the stock higher. Ultimately, this conversion happens on August 24th. At that point, a lot of people are under the assumption that AMC is going to basically nuke the stock, that there's going to be a lot of dilution. That's, that's what I mean by nuke the stock. There's going to be a lot of dilution and the stock's going to fall. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. This just opens the door for some point down the line, AMC can raise capital. This is just allowing them to actually do so doesn't mean they're actually going to do so and the way that amc stock has reacted recently right specifically that 35 and a half percent drop on august 14th it looks like markets are expecting amc to do some massive dilution now it's possible they do raise capital immediately or it's possible it could be weeks or months amc has around 600 million dollars they don't need to raise capital right away and uh, that's that's something I think could be actually an upside catalyst when we do get the reverse split and there isn't dilution. People are going to say, hey, why are we short in this? We should uh, cover because it doesn't look like they're raising capital. It, it doesn't look like there's any more uh, of that downside pressure, especially when you factor in these cost to borrow fees that are 900 percent. These fees are paid out every single day, right? Or the percentage is calculated every single day. So on the cost of our max or cost of our average, you're paying almost 3% every single day. So after a month or so, this trade is, you know, unprofitable for you, um, just depending on where you got put your short position on and what kind of cost of our fees uh, you are paying. Either way, a month or two, and you're unprofitable on this trade. So a lot of shorts, even though you've seen that 35% drop, are still unprofitable on the trade and good news is it looks like they will continue to be unprofitable on the trade as cost of our fees have went higher as of recently and as we get closer to next earnings i think there's going to be a little bit more optimism and amc will be able to move a little freer because a little more freely because we don't have this court decision that is still overhanging the stock you should be able to react a little bit better to positive earnings that we do get um, down the line so there is that like i said we do we did have a uh, target earnings that was not so good tomorrow you're going to get walmart earnings in the morning that's going to be the next or really one of the last important earnings of this earnings season uh you do have nvidia that's going to be next week and that one will be very very important for the markets but as far as retail and as far as potentially going to, into a recession or not walmart is uh very important and we definitely want to see what they have to say target did not do so well so if walmart does better um that's going to be really good and nvidia could literally crash the market so we'll have to wait and see uh what does happen with them because that one is just so important um so yeah there is that we do have the fed minutes later on today that's going to come out at 2 p.m. And that is going to be probably your last big catalyst of the day today. Um, looks like building permits didn't really cause too much of a move. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, yeah, it came out at 1.442. You were expecting 1.46. So a little bit lower than what we were expecting, um, but still not a huge deal in the grand scope of things, guys. So that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.